Good morning and happy Halloween. Since today is Halloween, I thought we would make a themed project and that's gonna be a jack-o'-lantern. I thought I would start with one of the skillet blanks I got from Roy over at Christ Centered Iron Works. I think I'll trim this into more of a pumpkin shape, put the lines that a pumpkin would have, carve the face, give it some shape for dimension, and then see if we can figure out a way to put a candle behind it. I just want to start with a vague pumpkin shape and then I'll fill in the details later. I think doing this on the bandsaw is going to be the way to go. Black Bear Forge is sponsored by Combat Abrasives. Use the link in the video description and the coupon code BLACKBEAR10 for a discount on your next order. So I'll just take a moment and lay out a little bit of a pattern here. Cutting around the teeth will undoubtedly be the most difficult part of this. Just establish these lines using whatever tools you happen to have and prefer. Certainly do this all with a hand chisel. This chisel is a little bit curved on the end and that makes it easier to follow a curved line. Of course, you can do the same thing with a handled chisel. Of course, I like doing work like this under the treadle hammer. And you can do that either with a handled chisel or a handheld chisel, as long as you have a stop to keep you from smashing your fingers. This also allows me to sit down nice and comfortable. So for the eyes, nose and mouth, this is my preferred tool. Again, this chisel is a little bit curved on the end so I can go around some corners, but I have to be real careful through here. This is kind of a tight corner. Curved chisel might be better for that. Another option would be to actually drill out this section with an appropriate size drill bit and then it's just done. And we may still do that. Now as blacksmiths, we like to do hot work as much as possible. 
But the truth is, sometimes cold work is much more efficient. And being able to work with a short chisel and get my hand real close to the work really does provide some accuracy. This is going to take a little bit longer to do it this way. We'll need to stop, normalize the piece of sheet metal from time to time because it does work hard in a little bit. But if you're patient, you'll get through this. And it probably won't take me more than about an hour of actual cutting at the treadle hammer to cut the eyes, nose, and mouth out. Be a little bit of time waiting for it to cool every time we go heat it up to normalize it. But I think this is probably the best way to go. You can certainly do this hot at the anvil. You'll need a longer handled chisel, probably need to wear a hot mill glove, or maybe use a handled hot cut like this if you're working at the anvil. And if you're working with a striker, it'll go a little faster. Once the piercings are done, we are gonna do hot work, so bear with me for a little bit here. I also take a little time to flatten this out when I normalize it, just so it's easier to work on. As I go through these normalizing cycles and straightening, I'm also going to add just a little bit of texture to it to give it more interest. But I'm going to try not to get carried away with it. Before cutting all the way through, make sure you have a soft plate in place to protect your anvil, whether that's your regular anvil or the anvil and the treadle hammer.
There will definitely be filing to clean up these piercings. At some point you get down to just trying to break this free along the score line. But if you cut deep enough, it goes pretty easy. Next thing I need to do is file all the raggedness off of this. So there's our spooky jack-o'-lantern face, but I think I'd like to be able to put a candle behind this, and right now it doesn't stand. If you want to hang it on a wall, it'd be easy to drill a hole in the stem or braze, solder, weld a little loop on the back to hang it from the wall. But I think being able to stand this up on a table is kind of the way I want to go with it. And I'm going to go pretty simple with that idea. I've just got a big hunk of steel. This is what we used to temper the blacksmith's knife a few videos back. This is one by two by four inches. And I'm going to forge a bevel around this just to make it look like a finished piece instead of an old piece of scrap. And then cut a slot in it that hopefully this will just stand up in. I'll probably just cut that slot in with an angle grinder. You could chisel it in if you wanted to, but I'm not sure that we need to go through that much work. We've done a lot of chiseling on this project already. I'm just gonna put this V block in the hardy hole just to serve as a stop so I can work kind of against that, just so it's a little bit easier to control the workpiece. Because of the curve, I think I need to back cut this slot just a little bit so it'll stand straight up in use.
I hope you enjoyed our Black Bear Forge Halloween special and our little jack-o'-lantern project. But before you finish typing that comment, yes, you could cut this with a plasma cutter. I don't do that much pierced work like that that would benefit from a plasma cutter, so I don't own one, and I think it is more cost-effective for me to just go ahead and cut it out. It takes a lot more time, but I don't think I would ever justify the expense of a plasma cutter. But if you have one and want to use it, go for it. The truth is, there probably is not 50 cents worth of steel in the chisel I use to cut out the jack-o'-lantern. So hopefully that's something that's in everybody's budget, and whether you have a non-electric shop and couldn't run a plasma cutter, you don't own a torch, so you can't cut it out with a torch, if you're a blacksmith, you ought to be able to make a chisel, and if not, this is a good first project. Blacksmiths have been cutting things with chisels long before there were any power tools, grinders, saws, plasma cutters, tortures, any of that kind of stuff. A chisel is a good traditional tool, and I really do encourage you to use one. It also leaves a little bit different effect than if you cut it out some other way. Cutting with a chisel upsets the edge just a little bit, makes it a little bit thicker, and leaves a nice bevel. A lot of times that gets filed out, depending on how much filing you have to do, but you can still see signs of the chisel cut in this. And personally, I think that adds more character to the piece, and I think it makes a piece more desirable. But again, you can do this any way you want. If I were gonna make a whole bunch of these for some sort of a fall craft show or fair or something like that, I absolutely would find some other way to do it, even if that meant paying a local water jet or plasma cutting operation to cut these things out in bulk and then customize them a little bit by filing, grinding, and different forging textures, things like that, so that they were all unique. Have a happy Halloween, stay safe, wear your safety glasses. We'll see you for the next one.